Good evening, everyone. Greetings to you all. Uh, glad to have you today, Friday, the 26th of November, 2021. So it's a pleasure to have you, and I'm always privileged and glad to share with you and to host you for this great sharing on business. My name is Jonan Kanwanaho, and uh, I'm the Managing Director at Janaki Holdings Limited. And at Janaki Holdings Limited, we give loans. We have microfinance institution, and we offer loans. We give credit, affordable credit, at affordable rates, in a very, very fast and efficient way. So it's always a pleasure to have you. Glad to have you, uh, Maya, as my brother, Scovia, Pleasure to have you. So always meet here every Friday from 5.30 to 6 to talk business. There, there are several other areas to talk about, but I chose business because I have passion for business and I like business. And I always want to share with my colleagues who are going through the same uh, challenges, going through the same interesting bits and closing deals here and there. So always make time to share with you. So I yet have an interesting topic today, as is the case of every Friday. And key thing to note is that all these videos that I, I share with you, the live streams, I eventually posted on the YouTube channel, John and Kanwanaho, so you can check them out. I've talked about several topics, bull fattening, cow fattening, money lending as a business, um, quite a number of things I've talked about. So you can always check. Uh, out all those interesting topics and then you can learn one or two things. Learning is not enough but you actually have to implement. So if you learn as many things as possible but you don't implement, you'll have wasted your time and you'll also have not valued my time and my data to come here and share with you. So it's my pleasure to share with you uh, today uh, quite an interesting topic called delegation in business. Now realize that um, Delegation applies to almost all aspects of life. So you could be an employee and you're working somewhere. This also applies to you because at a certain point, you cannot do it all. So you have to delegate some of the tasks. And that's why institutions have more than one person or else. The MD or the CEO of the institution could have done all the work. So just because the CEO or the MD cannot do all the work, it is delegated and that's why other, other staff or other employees come in, in picture. Why? Because one person or the CEO or the MD of the institution cannot do all the work. Now, that is not the case. That is not the case with most of the small businesses. I, I have an interesting statement that I read about that if you're making, if you're making um, a rocket to go to the, to the moon, or if you're finding out or advising means on how you can get to the moon, you had better, or usually the discipline is such that you actually devise means on how you can get back. Or else you might get there at the moon and you do not have any way out to get back. And you know what happens then? <laughs> You'll have sacrificed yourself. You'll have committed uh, suicide, which is, which is a crime if you're still alive anyway to be, uh, to be charged. So same applies to starting businesses. We get excited to start a business. We get excited to start businesses. And we forget that at the end of the day, some things might happen. For example, you might reach an age of 90 and you can no longer run your business. And you're too weak to run your business. What happens? Does it stop with you? And there are some of the things that we actually do not think about while we are starting the businesses. We get excited just because you've got some, some small money or perhaps you've acquired a loan, which is bad. I talked about that as well, that you shouldn't acquire a loan to start a new business in the first place. So if you get a loan and you get excited, just start thinking, let me start a business. But without knowing that at a certain point you have to exit, you have to exit the business. So in learning to delegate, in a way it communicates that. So meaning that if I start a business, I have to know that at a certain point, 
I may get sick and I cannot, God forbid, and I cannot participate actively in the business. I may get weak. I may get other better opportunities than the business. You know, I may start a business when I'm excited and time comes when the business is no longer making any sense. COVID hit and, and things turned around. The business might not perform and then, or perhaps you lost interest. The interest that you had in the first place is gone. So are you going to tell yourself there? You actually have to move on. As an entrepreneur, as a business person, you have to move on. So when you move on, whom are you going to delegate this business to? Whom are you going to give to leave this business with? So in starting a business, have an exit strategy. And this exit strategy will be partly informed by your level of maturity as far as delegation is concerned. So for those who might want to understand more what delegation is, that delegation is assigning tasks to another person to execute them on your behalf. If you cannot do the tasks by yourself, you delegate them. You hand them over to someone else to execute them for you. Now, people who start businesses or small businesses are interesting. You have a business, you're the accountant, you're the MD, you're the cleaner, you're the bookkeeper, you're the, you, you almost everything, like every, the business rotates on you. And you can imagine, I, I'd imagine that you're qualified in one particular area. Perhaps you're an entrepreneur, but you cannot be an accountant and be the finance officer and be the operations officer and be the, it becomes stretching. And then too, you might get weak or sick or you might have to get a day off or leave because our bodies get fatigued. So what happens? So it is pertinent that we get to understand what it is if we are to continue running our businesses. You have to delegate. You need an accountant who is a specialist in that area. There are people who have actually studied that area and specialized in the area and are experts in that area. So meaning that if you delegate that, that person, he's going to perform way better in that particular task, in executing that particular role, than you'd have done. And you know what that means? Your business is going to, to, to progress from one point to the other. And yet, had you been doing all the activities, all the services, all the roles at hand, you wouldn't have progressed to that, to that particular level. So it is key that you delegate the task to the expert or to someone who is qualified in that area. Because you cannot find yourself qualified in all those areas. Two, it is pertinent that we delegate because as an entrepreneur or as a person who started that business, you are meant to give the strategic direction, the strategic view of the company. If it has to grow, you have to give that direction. You have to think for it. You have to network for it. So what happens if you don't have time to do those things? You curtail the growth of that business. You counter the growth of that business. You're putting a lead. This is what we call the law of the lead. You're putting a lead on that business growth. So meaning that it cannot grow. Why? Because you're not growing. Because your business can grow just as much as the leader grows. So if you as a leader, you are not growing, or you're not looking out for resources for the business, or you're not networking or providing strategic direction for the business, it cannot grow. Even you yourself, you cannot grow because you're busy doing the accounting, you're busy doing the operations, you're busy uh, running the day-to-day -day, uh, errands of the business, and you do not have time to think for it to progress to another level, which becomes unfortunate. So that's why it's key that you delegate. It is pertinent that you actually delegate. So if you want your business to grow, if you don't want to put a lead on the business that you're running and it benefits you ultimately, then you actually have to learn to delegate. You have to know that you cannot know it all. So there are some mistakes that we make. Yes, you could be there and you delegate that you, you know, you delegate tasks or roles to someone else, but there are some things that we make that cost us a lot. 
you find that uh, sometimes you delegate to the employee and at the end of the day, we pull the tasks back to ourselves. That is called half delegation. So if I'm going to assign tasks to one of the, of the employees, I should be able to let go. I should be able to fully delegate, meaning that I should give the employee the role, the mandate, and the tools that they require to execute that task. If I assign you to be the operations officer, I should be able to give you all the requirements that it needs in that role to fully execute it. And then also, I should not micromanage you. You know, you assign a task to someone, and you well know that the person perhaps is able to execute the task, but you still follow up with the phone calls. You still follow up with, with micromanagement. That will affect that person's confidence and the ability to deliver on the task that you have, you have delegated to them, the role that you've de de delegated to them. So meaning that if you're to delegate, fully delegate to that person. Then point number two is that make sure the person has the capacity to deliver on that task that you're delegating them, to deliver on that role. So it is pertinent upon us, or you as a supervisor, or you as the owner of the business, to develop the capacity. If the employee does not have the capacity, you have to develop the capacity. Or to assess if the person that you're delegating to has the capacity to deliver on the role or the task you're assigning them. If the person does not have the capacity to deliver on that role, definitely they will either half deliver or they will not deliver at all. Or they will wrongly deliver on that task and it is a cost on your business. Give an example. It is like picking someone who is a professional in human resource. You tell them to do your books of accounts, to file your, your returns, your annual returns. And the person is not, first of all, is not qualified. Secondly, he's, he has no experience in that area. And now you're telling them to file your annual returns. I know what is going to happen. You're going to get wrong things. He's not going to do anything to deliver on that role. So meaning that you have to first train that person in that area. First, they have to be qualified. Then you have actually have to train them. Because what you study at school is very different from what you actually do at work. For those who have, who have been employed can attest to this. Or for those who have actually come to apply the things that we've learned can attest to this, that when it comes when it comes to application, the story becomes different. Things change. What you learned in school until you, you get hands-on, the real actual experience of applying what you learned, it is hearsay. Yes, you'll have that background, but you might not have the reality of the actual thing that happens on ground. It's like la learning how to build from school in a course, maybe construction management, and you've never experienced the actual construction. You've never supervised the project, the construction project. That's why for engineers, you have to actually prove that before you're registered in the engineer's registration board or registered as an engineer, you have to have supervised the project. You have to have participated. Hands-on experience. Because then, you'll not fully understand what it is that concerns engineering you will not uh, supervise a building or a particular project and it stands the test of time. Because you have to prove that actually you can uh, translate your theoretical engineering into the practical one. So it's not any different in business. If I'm going to do accounting in your business, if I am I'm going to, to file your annual returns, I should prove beyond reasonable doubt that you know what, I can actually do this task. So you, as the MD or as the owner of the business, it's pertinent that you, before you delegate, first make sure that the person is qualified to, to deliver on that role or that task. Uh, point number three is uh, make sure that there's clarity on what it is 
that the person has to deliver on. Define the actual task. What is it that you're, uh, that you're telling me to do for you? So you have to fully communicate. You know, sometimes we think that staff can figure out, you know, go and, f and figure it out. It's not possible. Even if it were you, let's not burden our staff. Let's, let's not contribute to the, to the failure of our businesses. If you're going to delegate a task, make sure you clarify what it is that you're delegating. Make sure you define what it is that you're delegating. If it is A, B, C, D, make sure you clarify it. So the person you, that, that, that you're delegating to can actually understand it and able to deliver on the same. Now you can imagine, if I give an example of a nurse, because if a person is in the hospital and in an emergency, let's say, and he needs blood transfusion, but whereas he needs blood, blood transfusion, there's some other thing that has to be done on the person. For example, diagnosis or injection or anything else. If it is one nurse who has to put the blood on that person, as well as do the diagnosis, as well as do the injection, it might be cumbersome. And you know what happens? You might lose the person. So our businesses are more like a life as well. This is a life. Why? Because they are providing for us. They are providing livelihood, not only for ourselves, but our families, but our friends, but our, our employees that we're employing. They are feeding from the business. So if they die, you do not know what befalls the other party, or even what befalls you. <laughs> you might not have what to eat. So they are, in, this, in this sense, providing for you. So in the example of the nurse, if there's no other nurse who is going to put the blood transfusion, whereas the other one is, is doing the injection, you might lose the patient. And many are the patients who have been lost in such a manner. In firefighting, time might even come that a person who has, who has never connected, who has never even injected someone in the tissue is trying to connect the blood. So you'd imagine the fracas that can happen right there. So you need to be trained as a nurse that when like, I'm injecting, this guy should be able to put the blood. But he should be trained to do that. He should be trained to do the blood transfusion. Or else you're risking a life again. You're even exposing the patient to more risk than the healing you want to execute on the person. And it's, and it's not any different in our businesses. If I'm assigning someone a role, I should be able to know that the person knows what he's doing. And I should clarify on the task that they are meant to do. If the nurse is meant to do the blood transfusion, I should not tell him to inject. I should not tell him to, to perhaps uh, massage a particular tissue. So the role has to be very, very clear. If it is doing A, it is doing A. If it is balancing books of, of accounts, it is doing that. Or else I'll be risking the business. Or else I'll be risking the business. So I'm giving you a task or an assignment. Either that as if you're the MD or the owner of the business or the employee and you have other people under you, you're formally employed, you have your supervisors, if you're delegating, make sure the tasks are defined properly. It's only then that you're going to realize the benefits or the intentions of delegating that task. It's only then that you're going to progress to deliver on the assignments. It's only then that you're going to uh, contribute to the growth of that company. It's only then that you can actually get promoted. Because if I cannot delegate the tasks that I have at hand, that means I don't even understand the tasks that I have at hand. So in not understanding them, I cannot be even assigned a bigger role. Because if I fail to comprehend the roles that I have at hand or the tasks that I have at hand, then I cannot assume bigger roles. And you know what that means? I cannot progress. Even if you're formally employed in your career, if you cannot fully deliver on the job that you're holding right now, that means even if you're promoted to a senior level or director level, you cannot deliver. 
and it's after confirming that confirming that I can actually fully fully delegate to the extent that uh, I can actually sit on the panel and know which candidate can actually fit in this position. Do you ever realize why supervisors or directors or managers or a person is put on the panel to recruit for the level that is below him or her? Because the assumption is you understand what is meant to be delivered on. So you can actually identify that person and know that he or she qualifies for that position and he can deliver. But you can imagine if you're a supervisor or a manager, but you do not fully comprehend the roles in that position. Or that means you can actually not fully delegate those roles. And that can curtail your growth, your progression in your career. So if you're a senior person, that means you cannot progress to a manager you live. Why? Because you're still trying to understand the position that you're holding. So you cannot even participate in the recruiting of someone to take over your position. No, some, some of the people uh, intentionally refuse to, to delegate because they think they are risking their positions. They have that kind of insecurity of knowing that, you know, if I fully delegate, if I fully explain this task to this person, he might over-deliver on that task, and by the time I realize, I might be kicked out of the institution. So that kind of insecurity cannot work. That kind of insecurity cannot work especially if you're formally employed, and you have to grow in your career, you have to get employed somewhere else. So you have to get secure. You have to grow your esteem, and know that, you know, I cannot do it all. So time has to come when you have to actually define the tasks and fully delegate them to someone else to deliver on them. It's only then that you can grow. All of us have grown in our positions because we've supported someone to take over our junior position so that we can get to higher positions. So this actually immediately communicates to people who are formerly employed in different institutions. And for those who are in businesses, for you as a director of that business, as the, the, the MD of that business, make sure you assign all the roles gradually to the extent that you even have to reach a level and assign that CEO role to someone else. Why? Because you need to create more time to think for the company to even start another company. Why not? We are made for more. We are made to start more businesses and do great exploits for the Lord and for the country and for the world. Who says you have to keep as the MD all through? So you need to create more time to think strategically for the business. But you cannot think strategically if you're still participating in the operations. You're the accountant, you're the finance officer, you're the payee, you're the payer, you're the, you're the manager, everything. You're the cook. So you can imagine if the chef is the one welcoming the visitors, is the one serving, is the one developing the menu, is the one, will the restaurant progress? It cannot progress. It cannot progress. By the time you realize, the restaurant will fail because you, you come to, get, to, to pick the order from the, from the client, get to the kitchen to start preparing the client. By the time you get done with preparing the food, <laughs> the client will be gone. <laughs> the client will be long gone. So meaning that there has to be someone to welcome the visitors or the customers. There has to be someone to ask for the order. There has to be someone to go and pick the food and serve the client. There has to be someone who has to be pre pre preparing the actual food. So there has to be someone who has to be taking care of, of, the, of the environment of the restaurant. So that if, if the person gets done with the food or gets done with eating, you can take the plate away. Something like that. So ladies and gentlemen, it's important that whether it's a small business, we learn to delegate. Because we cannot do it all. Because we are not experts in all the fields. We learned one particular area. If you started that business, you had passion for it, you're an entrepreneur. So you have to think strategically for the business. So meaning that you have to get someone who can actually do the operations. You have to get someone who can file your returns. You have to get someone who can actually keep double checking on how the business is, is running. You have to get someone who is meant to be doing the marketing and the sales. You have to get someone who has to run the Twitter, the Facebook, the Gmail account of the company. 
all these tasks have to be assigned to someone else if you actually have to grow. Or else you're shooting in your own foot and you're curtailing the growth of your business. You're countering the growth of your business. You're a stumbling block to your own business. That's the bad news and that's how worse it can get. That's how worse it can get. So guys, as an, as, as an assignment to you, whether you're MD, whether you're, you're formally employed, whether you're, you're a manager, go and fully delegate to someone else who can do the tasks better than you. That's only then that you can actually grow. That's only then that you can actually progress to another level. And that's only then that you're going to grow your business from one point to the other. And that's only then that even if you exit that business, that even if you take a vacation of two months or three months from the business, you'll find it when it has actually grown than when you left it. But if not, you'll just step out. Some of the business, you actually step out one day. And they think that that's enough, or two days, or one week. That's enough period for it to collapse. That's how bad it can get. Why? Because you do not fully delegate. Because it's only then that you can actually fully uh, phase yourself out of the business and fully exit and even the business can actually thrive in your absentia and mind you if someone else wants to buy it or wa wants to buy your business because at the end of the day you may want to, buy, to sell your business and start something else that interests you or get some bit of chunk of money if you're the only person who can run that business if it rotates on you that means if you sell it to him it can only thrive maybe one or two days, and collapse. So you can imagine the offer that someone can actually give you, if there's any offer anyway. Because if the business can fail with you, if it cannot thrive minus you, that means you're the business. You're a moving business yourself. So it cannot, you, can even, you cannot even sell it to someone else. That's how bad it can get. <laughs> That's how bad it can get. So you have to get serious and delegate the tasks that have to be delegated, and in a way, you'll be drafting your exit strategy, and in a way, you'll be supporting the growth of your business. So I see our time is fast spent. That's what I could share with you. As I've always I told you, if you learn one or two things, go and implement. It will be a service to you and to myself for the time that I make to come and share with you. So don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jonan Kanwanaho, and also check out our website for our services at www.jonakiholdings.com. I love you guys, and we have bigger tasks ahead of us. We have bigger tasks at hand that we have to deliver on for our communities, for our families, for our countries, and for the entire world. The Lord requires us to do great exploits for him and for his kingdom. So you don't have a luxury of relaxing, you don't have a luxury of not learning, you don't have a luxury of dilly darling. It is now time to perfect the things that we actually do. I love you guys. Enjoy your Friday and the rest of the weekend. God richly bless you. See you next Friday. Cheers. Bye-bye.